Good evening, gents. Frankie Day here on YouTube. Okay, fellas, uh, for this joyous Monday evening, Veterans Day, this is video number seven for my combat vacuum form kit 148 scale PVM3 Mariner flying boat. Okay, fellas, this is supposed to be the final reveal, but uh, I put the cart before the horse again, as usual. And uh, right now, uh, the cart's behind the horse. So uh, I should have this thing done by tomorrow for the final reveal, fellas. Uh, right now she's about 95% done. And uh, so I got a few things to do on it. And I just got off work. And uh, so I, I, I gave a little touch test right there to see if that uh, the varnish is dry enough so I can be able to put some wash on it. And it's still a little, uh, just a little tacky, not very much, just, just a hint tacky. So. I'm going to give it some extra time, so tomorrow I'll start doing the wash. I know it'll be touched dry tomorrow. And I got props to do on, the engine facing, you got to touch up and paint. I got the uh, the crew door forward of the cockpit that's got to be uh, installed. And I got props. And I've got all the clear parts all prepared and uh, they're all done. And uh, I got them all masked off right here. And uh, you'll see it in the video here, and it's painted non-specular blue-gray. As you can see it right here behind me, on my uh, behind my right shoulder. And the same color as, as the Coronado. It was 1940, 19, uh, by 19, late 1941, they they went ahead and started painting them all uh, non, uh, all uh, intermediate blue. And they got away from the blue-gray because blue because you got to realize, fellas. Back in 1940 and 1939, the United States Navy were, were doing away with grays on, on aluminum finishes. Now, them too, they too were preparing for war. So they were experimenting with blues. The Navy always had a, they always had a fetish for blues and grays because it chalked, because the, the coloring had a chalking in the background of the ocean. Uh, as seen from above, if, if, the, if, if it's on the water, it's the, the camouflage is almost, it's almost invisible, it's almost stealth. And uh, so the Navy was uh, formulating with different shades of blues and like that, and pretty soon they all got their heads together and, and they one big tank tank, and they said, well, let's go ahead and start painting these things intermediate blue. And then another guy came up and said, well, I'd be better than that. Why don't we just go ahead and paint the inter intermediate blue? And uh, with non specular dark sea blue on top. That way, you get the chalking of the ocean, and plus the different colors of the shades of the ocean. And that way, the camouflage will blend even better. So, that was the, uh, the, the, the color scheme they used on, on the latter part of the war. It was going non specular white, non specular sea blue, and also intermediate blue was the norm for flying boats and all carrier aircraft alike. Then they got away from all that by, by 1944 and 1945, they all went sea blue. And the rest is history. So this boat right here is painted like that, the Coronado, which is non-specular blue-gray. And that's, that was the color that was used at, at, at that time, that era. And plus you got the star and the meatball, and signal which incorporated. This is, uh, this is uh, boat number three. And the PBM 3 D model, and uh, in all her entirety. And uh, so, we're going to take a video of here and we're going to take a look at it, and I'll discuss uh, uh, what I've done on it and what i got to do to finish it. And some small sundry parts I made by scratch to it and everything. And um, so, well, like I say, fellas, I was hoping I could have had it done less than a day or two ago, but. I looked at my time drying time and the size of the airplane itself and everything and and uh, masking and fitting out this and that it it took longer than expected so I could be careful though of, of uh, saying when these things are going to get finished or not going to get finished but I can't see why this thing cannot be finished by tomorrow so uh, right now I'm going to let it dry overnight I'm going to go tank around with a little bit of uh, um, do a little painting, touch up painting here and there on it, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, guys, we'll swing the camera around, take a look at the Mariner, and uh, we'll get out of the picture here, and we'll get a little closer to her. 
Okay, guys, and we'll waltz around with the Lazy Susan. As you can see how she's painted a splitted color of uh, non-specular sea, uh, uh, non-specular blue-gray. Now, using federal standard color chips to make uh, to make non-specular blue, you got to you got to have a green base to it. And um, non-specular sea blues, uh, they more or less uh, use a tinge of red. And also with the gray, they put uh, a red in the gray too. And uh, you can see the fidelity of detail of the pre shading as it came in on here. It took me almost two hours to do the pre shading on this thing. I got some pictures of I posted this on Facebook, guys, on the pre shading. And um, it, uh, it took a lot of took a lot of pain to do the pre shading on this thing. It's a beautiful looking boat, fellas, you know, no doubt about it. The Mariner is a very beautiful looking airplane. And there's a model 162. Wingspan 115 feet, powered by two Wright Cyclone 2800 horsepower motors. She had a range of 1,800 miles. And the Glen Martin was the first was the first uh, innovator and designer of the Merlin cell. And the Merlin cells were, were designed by Mr. Glenn Martin as, as extra fuel capacity. You see, these flying boats, guys, had one hell of a range. Uh, that's, and there they, they've uh, earned their and gained their the glamour of fame throughout the late 1930s and up to the 1940s and even the early part of the 1950s. But like I say, fellas, you can't stop progress. Uh, during the event of multi-engine aircraft such as the DC-7 Mainliner, the DC-6 Cloudmaster, the DC-4 Skymaster, the L-1011 uh, uh, Super Constellation, and the Boeing 377 Pan Am Clipper, and uh, the Vice Count, and also the head jets were coming in too. So these multi-engine aircraft I just named out a while ago had equal range as that of the flying boat, and there was more airports out there that could accommodate them. So that more or less rendered a flying boat a victim of its time. And the last flying boat that was ever used, that that was actually being in, being um being designed and test flown and ready for service, but couldn't find a client, was well, Saunders Row SR-45 Princess flying boat. She was the largest flying boat in the world. She was about 20 feet, uh, 25, 30 feet larger than the Martin Mars. So she was only three such examples were made, but they were never completed because they gave up on the program because the flying boat by 1956 all flying boats were stricken from the naval, naval and Coast Guard registers because they had no need for them no more. The war come to an end and there was also pipe dreamers out there that said, well, we can use these flying boats here, we can use them as, uh, as passenger aircraft too. And now they want to fly on, or they can fly on flying boats too, it'd be just as glamorous, but, but people back in those days, things were changing. There was no need for them anymore. <clears throat> so they did their they did their purpose, they done their job, and only one flying boat of us existent today, that's existent, that's still flying, is the Martin Mars uh, in Canada Force Industries as, as the Brett Bombers. Only two such boats are left, the only, the only ones of this kind and, and existent. And uh, there's probably a few mariners out there in museum somewhere, Naval Museum, Pensacola Naval Museum, they probably get a couple there hanging around. I see a lot of these mariners at Sangley Point in the Philippines, in Cavite City, back in the mid 1950s, and uh, they were uh, superseded by the the P5M Marlin. The P5M Marlin flying boat was uh, a lot more modernized compared to the PBM Mariner, because the PBM Mariner was an aging boat. She was designed in the mid 1930s and actually uh, was. Uh, 
was purchased by the United States Navy by the late 1930s. And uh, of course they used out through the war and after the war, they used during the Korean and Cold War conflict, they used them as patrol bombers. And, um, and so by 1956, a lot of these uh, mariners were uh, also like the Martin Mars. They were just stricken from the Naval Register. They had no, they had no, no, uh, no more need for them anymore. I mean, they just, they served their, 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 they served their time, and they're like I said, they're a victim of their time. Okay, guys, uh, that concludes video number seven for the P5, uh, the PBM three, Mariner flying boat. And we'll bring the camera back to yours truly over here to finish up the video. Okay, guys, I've been still working on the short sunder in my towel array. I've uh, I got the fuselage all buttoned up. And I got the beaching gear installed on it. I'll have a video of that tomorrow right after the final reveal for the Mariner. And uh, we'll, uh, after that, we'll go ahead and um, <clears throat> I'll start uh, commencing work on that and probably drag something else out. Uh, Mr. Martin Lamott, uh, a scale of national uh, scale modelers, uh, is going to have a, uh, a group build, uh, the Venture Schmidt uh, uh, 410, I believe it is. Venture 410, uh, the, uh, the, the Henschel, wherever it is. The 410 Venture Schmidt. And uh, so I've got, I've got about two or three of those in my st stash pile. But they're not plastic, they're card kits, so the 133 scale. So, Martin, I don't think Martin would mind if I drag that out and use that as a good build entry. And, and since it's going to be a three month build, I might just go down to my favorite hobby shop of choice, which is Smitty's, and see Russ down there, see if he can scare me up at 410 by Monogram. And I think I see a couple of them laying around back there, so I may just get one of those as a sub area build. Okay, guys, this concludes uh, video 7 on the Mariner Flying Boat. So to stay tuned tomorrow for the final reveal for this. I shall have it for you done tomorrow, boys. And, uh, and, uh, that'll be that. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show you something, guys. You've probably seen it as I twirl this thing around. It's making parts for it. I made the, um, I don't know why I forgot to show you here. I'm too busy talking, talking about this thing. You can see uh, I made the beaching gear right here for it. Port and starboard beaching gear. I made it from scratch. This fits on the port side. Plugs in. I already made holes for it already. And there's a little, little hole right about here that I made. Right there. That's where the bit that beaching gear plugs into. Okay, back to yours truly, guys. I'm very truly sorry for not uh, showing that during the, the view of this, though. So I'm going to get the beaching gear hooked up to it tonight, though, and we probably uh, get a bit of color wash. But I can't do no wash on this tomorrow. Okay, guys, time to get out of here right now. And God bless you guys very much. Thank you for your comments. Make Mama happy. And uh, happy modeling. And please subscribe. And God bless you guys. And uh, be sure to join in on Mr. Martin Lamont's uh, 410, Measure Spin 410 buddy build. And group build we got shaken down. It starts next month. And uh, so he's got his Facebook page on there just specifically for that build. And uh, so... Post all those pictures you can, guys. Uh, we'll all be delighted. Okay, uh, let's make it next time. I'm getting out of here. We'll catch you guys tomorrow for the final reveal of the Combat 148 scale PBM 3D Mariner flying boat. See you tomorrow, fellas. God bless you, boys.